Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're going to hear from the CEO of Wave, that is W-A-V-V-E um, dot com. And they created a really cool product to help podcasters. Um, here's, the, here's the thing, though. And this while we're going to talk to Jeff about this product that they created and how it actually helps podcasters get their content out there to that many more people and help them build an audience. It's the building the, of the audience part that we need to focus on. We need to, what the, the, the Jeff Dolan and the folks at Wave did was they found a group who had a need and they created a niche from that and that is something that if we're going to be successful business owners sometimes we need to listen before we act we need to listen to what the needs of a group of people are a group of people who already trust us and build on what that need is and create something cool that that fixes a problem so and that's what the folks at wave did for podcasters so we're going to listen to jeff as he describes that and how they built a um, a company around this particular product and niche. Hey, welcome to the show, Jeff. And um, I know you have a real interesting story about how your company Wave got started, and that's W A V V E, right? Yes, sir. For Wave. Um, and how did you get to be CEO of the company anyway? How'd that all happen well, thank, for you? Yeah, thanks, Michael. Yeah, it's, it's good to be on. Um, so, yeah, the the company actually started in 2016 uh, by three founders uh, from South Carolina, and they built it up through uh, just bootstrapping it, really. And um, they were on Indie Hackers, uh, kind of sharing their journey and built up a good community. And that was around the time that podcasting was starting to really catch steam. And so they built up the company in the podcasting uh, kind of niche to help podcasters share their audio on social media. So at the time, it was very hard, uh, it still is, to share just audio on the social media platforms. They want text, pictures, and video. Uh, but if you're an audio creator, you're kind of left out, uh, especially when it comes to how do you get your audio into a video with some visuals uh, to stop somebody from scrolling and kind of pay attention to what you're what you're doing. And so this idea of creating a trailer for your audio uh, was something they built their company on. And so I had been in corporate America in corporate uh, business development and sales and always wanting to, you know, do my own thing. Um, and I, I had some friends that were always telling me, hey, you should come work, you know, for us or we're one of our companies. And they were private equity uh, investors buying companies and specifically in the in the SaaS world. And so finally they said, hey, we have this company that uh, we're looking at. Will you come run it for us? And I said, make me an offer. <laughs> and they did. And so I was able to uh, come over and, and be the CEO of Wave. And so uh, it was a great opportunity for me. I, I I really have been learning a whole lot about 
uh, the leadership role in a SaaS company. I'd worked for software as a service companies my whole career uh, selling, uh, but then to actually be uh, running one and, and seeing all the different parts of the business, it's really eye-opening. Oh, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to make good decisions for sure. Uh, you have to manage your capital, right? Uh, the cash flow of the company. Uh, you have to keep your shareholders in mind. So any of the stakeholders that are involved, and there's many, right? You have the investors in your company, uh, the shareholders, uh, you have the board, um, you have the customers, right? And then you have your staff. Uh, and so all those different stakeholders, you have a different interest in the company. And so being a good communicator is also important, right? So you have to not only manage the cash flow, keep your eye on the decisions you're making and paint a picture of what the vision of the future is and for, for each of those stakeholders. So you want to really focus in on what is going to create an environment for success for everyone involved? Uh, why do people want to come work for you? Uh, are you building anything exciting, right? Do the investors want to invest their money, their hard-earned money, and, and see it uh, grow there uh, with you? Um, so there's all sorts of different directions that uh, you're, you're feeling pulled in or, or trying to communicate to. And each one has... Uh, a story that you need to tell uh, about where you're going as a company um, and everybody, you know, you ideally you want everybody to get on board with you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, but the in a SaaS company, the developers uh, are very important, right? Like you, you have to um, build on your product constantly as the market shifts and changes. So you always want to be keeping up with the latest trends, the market demands, uh, what your customer uh, needs right now. And so in this industry, the podcasting audio industry, it's a fast moving industry. It, it moves at the lightning at a lightning pace. And I was uh, I was at a conference recently, a uh, big podcast conference, and talking to a bunch of different uh, players in the space. And there's this big uh, discussion right now around um, video and podcasters getting into video, right? And whether the video provider should cater to podcasters or not. Uh, because podcasters have kind of been, um, I, I don't want to say marginalized, but... If you want to listen to a podcast today, you're, you're going to a music platform first, right? You're not really thinking about, well, let me go to a TikTok or a LinkedIn or a Facebook, right? You're thinking, I, I got to go to a Apple podcast player or Spotify or, right? Like you're thinking like, I got to go to this channel 
to listen to my audio. And then if I want to watch video, I got to go to YouTube or Vimeo or right or one of those social platforms. So it's very kind of its own thing. And a lot of the discussion, the conference is like a lot of these ideas these channels are starting to converge where it's your one-stop shop for all types of media and the influencer or the personality is starting to put their content in different formats on all these different platforms. And so as the social media companies try to gain more uh, audience and more users, they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we reach out to podcasters? How do we reach out to these different content creators and get them all in the same platform? And so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, but but as part of that uh, understanding, right, it's, it's my job to understand, okay, how then do we lead the developers to listen to our customers, listen to the market, and really understand what is going to help our content creators, our podcasters that are audio first, meaning audio is the core thing they're focused on. They're not so much focused on the visual of it, like capturing and editing the video, but obviously you need that for social media. You know, how can we cater to our, our creators um, with the software? And so once you listen to the market, you got to understand what is what are the pain points, what are the solutions that our creators or customers are trying to solve, and then how can you develop that software fast enough and efficiently enough to your point of execution being key? How do you execute on that in a way that can go to market and really solve those problems? Because right now we're seeing seeing right now we're seeing an explosion of AI. So, uh, AI is almost eating software, right? Where AI is taking an input from a creator and then generating content from it, right? So if I type in some words, I can paint a picture now. If I type in some words, I can create video. If I uh, have text, I can generate voice off of it. It might be not my voice, right? If I'm dancing around i can replace my face now with someone else's face i mean it, i can replace it with an avatar so there's all these different ways now that ai is getting into the content creation game even to the point of like writing for you right there's some very popular ai tools out there that are basically you start writing and it's like filling in for you like oh you want to write about that boom here it is and so it's, it's, it's getting very exciting, but at the same time, the go-to-market strategy of a lot of these software companies is like, wow, like which, who are you really uh, going to cater to, right? Who are you going to build for? Because all, all of this, uh, all the APIs of all these AI companies, all these uh, different uh, development skill sets that you need, it's all kind of coming together. And the question is, what what does the market demand and what can you build? And we all have budgets, right? Like running, right? Running companies. It's like, you can't do everything. Um, you can try, but what is the thing you're going to focus on and get to market and to solve the problem or solve a, a, a challenge? And that's been a, a real big eye opener for me because I'm a idea guy. I, I see what's happening in the market. I'm like, Ooh, I want to do that. Let's do that. Right, and you bring it back to the dev team, and they're like, "Well, we'll put that on the on the calendar, right, for next quarter or next year, or right." And it's like, "Wait a minute, it's hot right now. I want to get it out now." Well, you said all these other things we got to work on first, right? So it's a prioritization, it's a timing, uh, and you, and you have to really get in your customer's head almost to understand like, is this something that I need? now am i going to need it later or is it this going to be solved in another way right and so you look at the competition and you say okay what other is this something that google is going to all of a sudden decide that they're going to take care of right is this something that meta is going to just say oh yep we're going to solve that uh or any of these big companies and i don't think anyone really foresaw the tiktok uh, format invasion, right? Where TikTok, the format of vertical video swiping up was so popular and addictive that almost every other social media platform copied it. 
right? So you have first Instagram going, oh, yep, direct copy. We're going to just copy that and we're going to just do it. And uh, then all the other, you know, right? So it just went on down the line. YouTube was like, well, we need shorts now. And, and uh, Pinterest was like, we got you. Reddit, we got you, right? Like all the different social media engines just started saying, okay, if that format is what's keeping people on the platform, we need to offer it. And what that did was that created a huge vacuum of content, right? Because if you have, if we have this conversation, this might be a 20, 30, 40 minute conversation where the, the vertical swipe videos are like seconds, right? And so all of a sudden you have a huge audience that wants these short clips, these short dopamine hits, and they're not going to sit through an hour, right? And so how do, so all of a sudden the platform is like asking the creators like, hey, can you help us create clips now? <laughs> and so uh, at Wave, that's a very big focus. Like how do we help you chunk down your, your longer content? That's not to say your longer content is not important, right? I think there's obviously audiences existing today that love the longer formats, right? But the new inventory the hot new trend is the is the shorter and so now the content creators are like how do i cascade my content remix it cut out the, the highlights of it and get it in the, the formats that are popular right now and so that's those are some of the challenges and some of the things that you know i'm learning and uh, and looking at in the market when i consider you know how do you rely on your dev team to execute at a level that is going to meet the market demands. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it's almost even worse than that right because i feel like in the being in the social media space or the content creation space for social media uh it's it's almost like if you don't create content you don't exist online right so it, it's not even like you're not showing up it's like you just don't exist so if you don't if you're not regularly creating content it's like, are you okay? <laughs> Where did you go? Um, and and it's it's almost funny now because you're as and, and this has kind of been a shift over the last couple of years. But as the paid ads have become less uh, effective, and and the ROI on it has become less, the 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 focus on creating social media and creating brand and showing up online has increased, right? And so more and more people are shifting their focus from spending money on paid ads to spending money on their own content that they're creating, right? And so it does become a, a very vicious cycle of creating content to exist online, right? And to your point about balance, you really do need to have balance and have those those uh, those personal boundaries, uh, or or it'll just overtake everything, right? You'll always be in a state of thinking about how is this relevant for me to capture, so I can quote unquote create content, and that can be very destructive if it if it's not put in its proper place. Yeah. Um. Yeah, in, in in all aspects of life, you know that balance is. It, we got it. We got to get there. Um, it, and also with that, uh, I know you're the 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 leader of of a company that helps us redirect and redevelop our content. But you're also a content creator. That's uh, right. Yep. Which 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 gives it gives you a different perspective than than say. Um, the your developers because you understand some of the problems that we have in creating content you know 100 percent. yeah yep. so 
Yeah, and that's and that's been fun uh, because I've been able to come at it with that hat on and say, I am not just the president; I'm a customer. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and and so it's funny sometimes because I I I'm also the QA uh, the guy or the head of QA, right? Right. Quality assurance. So when they're done coding, it's like okay let me put my creator hat on and use this and see if it works the way I think it works. And there'll be times where I'm using, you know, an Adobe product and I'm like, Hey, this is how it works because this is how I, I use it with Adobe or, you know, my, I'll put my filmmaking hat on and say, Hey, there's a, there's a concept in film where we do this and why don't we adopt that into our software? And so I'm able to pull from, you know, my, my music, uh, background or my film background or even my my design background right doing like web design or graphic design and so it's it's really interesting as i've watched even a company like adobe grow over the years how the sound the film the visual design and now even the text and and uh, the text editing kind of coming in uh for caption subtitles uh storytelling it's all kind of borrowing from each other as far as the the actual ui and ux of it where there are certain um elements of editing and i think one of the big developments have been that's been pretty exciting uh in this in our space uh there's uh this what i call text-based audio editing where you see the text on the screen and instead of seeing like a timeline that you're you're editing like a waveform it's just the text and you're selecting the text to then select the audio underneath it. Right now that doesn't work too well with music, but if it's spoken word, the ability to select the text to actually select the audio clip is actually one of the new innovations that's happening. And, uh, it, it's an exciting thing that we're working on. Uh, there's some companies that are doing it right now very successfully. And, uh, you know, I think there's going to be even more innovations uh, that are coming out. But yeah, I think the the biggest thing that I've pulled from being a creator myself is just the storytelling aspect of it. Uh, like just, I mean, if you make a film, you have to obviously know how to tell a story uh, if you're going to be any good at it. And so a lot of the things that I'm having to constantly come back to and pull from is what is a good story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I, I um I watched one of your um it was a it was a, well in the industry would be called a short, but it because it was like fifteen minutes long. short film. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. um, but in comparison to those swipe videos, <laughs> it, it's it, it's long, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But but it, but the thing the thing of it is is one thing about it, I I. The question would be: Do um, would those short, those, those swipe videos, ever ever become so popular that we would stop stop watching, like even the fifteen minute shorts or the longer movies? You know. No, I don't think so at all. Right. I, I think what happens is, if you look at even something older like a newspaper, they never went away. Right, newspapers are still here. Magazines are still here. Mm -hmm. um, they just get m marginalized and and kind of put to the folks that still want to consume content that way. Um, whereas the the younger folks that are more used to a phone, that's how they get their news or their updates, right? And so there's uh, I just saw a trend recently where most of the young people are taking their news updates from like the TikToks of the world rather than a news outlet. Right? right. And so, but if you're an older generation that's used to a newspaper, you're like, where's my newspaper? Yeah. Like you're not looking for your phone to get right. So I think it's just one of those things where, I mean, there's still, there's a huge resurgence in vinyl records, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like I just saw, and I just saw the other day, like a cassette, like a tape, like a, like an audio cassette that oh somebody was using, right? <laughs> so, you know, now, granted, there might just be hipsters in Nashville, but 
um, I, I think there's always an audience for whatever you're you're creating or whatever you're doing. Uh, the question is like, how big is it? Uh, but I do think film is not going away. I mean, film in any length is going to match the time that you have for it, right? Now, yeah. some people, they like to browse and they just like to watch a little bit of something and then come back later and watch a little bit more. But most people uh, want to finish it in the time that, that is allotted, right? So if they're like, hey, I, I want to relax for this evening and I want to I want to fill the evening and I want to watch a two-hour movie or a three-hour movie, that's great, right? It's going to fill the night and then they're going to you know, have a good time. Some people are like, hey, I'm on a commute. I got 20 minutes. And they'll look for a podcast that's 20 minutes long. Or they'll look for a short film that's 10 minutes long, right? right? But there are people that will, you know, the, the different time, time formats will fit whatever your budget is for time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you bring, bring that up because this particular um, show and podcast um, was designed for that, 40 minute car ride from either home to work or from work to home and it's like and that's what that's why the timing of it is specifically what it is and being audio only is like you can drive uh, because it, it, you can't drive and watch it watch a video right <laughs> that exactly. doesn't work too well <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and people ask yeah that. that's perfect and yeah. I love audio for that yeah you know so, um, we, we have to design our content, um, to, to match the situation and to match our audience in that situation, right? Absolutely. And that's been a real challenge for me. I, I gotta just be open about that. I mean, and I, I think it's, it's hard for a lot of creators, right? Like I'm used to having an artist hat on with a critical eye towards, excellence like i want to make it good as far as i consider good right <laughs> which is subjective but it i think what it equates to when i say artist hat is we have this self-editing self-critical nature to what we produce or what we create and uh that has a certain cer a certain level of preciousness to it where it's like i'm gonna make like my sci-fi short film, right? That took a lot of effort, a lot of people, a lot of time, right? Scripts, actors, makeup. Yeah. I mean, there's special yeah. effects. There's all the sound. Yeah. You know, the sound design alone was crazy. So there's all sorts of excellence or art that goes into something like that. Whereas a TikTok video, you could do it in seconds, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of like a throwaway piece of content. Uh, but in some cases, there are artists that are like, no, I'm actually going to tell a story in 20 seconds, and this is going to be my art. This is going to be my canvas. And there are certain people that that is their canvas. They look at it like this is a production. And if you even, I used to do like commercials, right? And so like even a 30-second spot for a brand is sometimes could be millions of dollars, right? If you're, if you're really looking at, you know, how what production is going to go into that 30 second commercial that's going to go on the Super Bowl, for instance, right? Yeah. So, so there, there, there is high art to short form content. Um, it hasn't reached TikTok level though, right? It's like there's very few brands that are producing at that high level for TikTok for that short swipe format, yeah. especially in the vertical, right? Which is funny to most filmmakers. It's we're all like, no, not vertical video. <laughs> Turn it horizontal. <laughs> no, right. Um, but but yeah, I don't I don't think uh, I I think it is hard to kind of figure out what is your best way of communicating as a creator in in the face of all the different formats that are that are out there. So it's like, am I the best writer? Am I the best photographer? Am I the best filmmaker? Do I am I a good conversationalist? Mm -hmm. Right. Am, am I a good storyteller? And you kind of have to do some inventory on yourself to say, what kind of content am I the best at? Let me start there. And then you kind of want to build your team around the other formats. And, and some formats lend themselves to being chopped up and put in the other formats and some don't. Right. Like some are just very hard 
to chop up or or put into different formats. Yeah, that that's that is very true. But I, I like what you said about being true to yourself first uh, uh, as an artist. Um, and your your sci-fi um, short that it is like. What I, what I really liked about it was, and I can, I can see how you're being true to yourself, was it left you asking more questions than you actually gave answers to. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so how do you, when, you, when we're building content, we, we have to know what we want to inspire in people, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of storytelling. I think that's part of wanting to connect with your fellow humans, right? Like what, what kind of story do you want to tell and how do you want to connect? I was just talking to a friend about the, the Kanye West, you know, yay situation that's going on right now where uh, he's saying things that are super controversial and brands are dropping him. People are distancing themselves. Um, it, it's just a, it's a huge, uh, you know, cluster right now for him. Uh, he's, he's kind of lost his family. He's going through a lot of pain. Uh, you know, I'm very sympathetic to that, but on the same time, my friend was pointing out that he's, he's instigating that, right? He, like Trump did, he knows the social and culture, um, cycle and how, and how the news cycle works and how the story that he's telling gets him into those interviews and news articles and PR, right? Like he generates his own controversy to create the platform worldwide for what he's doing. And so yeah. it's very interesting yeah. that as a creator, you have to figure out what, what way do you want to tell a story to, to then connect with people? And his is very adversarial, right? Like he's creating huge controversy and then he's getting on these podcasts and interviews and saying like all right i'm here let's talk <laughs> um and of course you know 99 percent of people don't want to have that kind of conflict right um and they want to tell better stories but even like you know movie directors i mean they'll they'll write they'll write some very controversial movies that'll create more conversations in society right there's a there's a pretty funny so it's it's actually one of the few comedy sci-fis that are out there in the last five to ten years. Um, it, it's called Don't Look Up. Have you seen oh, this yeah, movie? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that was it, that that was a hilarious film oh, about something so that well is done. very true that could happen. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, in, well, there's a lot of truth in sci-fi, right? Also, you know, yeah. I I saw that on Netflix. Um, See, and and then it goes back to how do people actually go and look for their content too, right? Right. Um, because I just said I look for it on on Netflix because I don't have regular television. I right. use Netflix and Prime and and uh, for that matter, also a, a paid version of YouTube. Right. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, yeah, that's another question you have to ask is, you know, where do you want to distribute your content? Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the way that you tell the stories, the way that you show up, uh, all these things create conversations, create connections, or they create controversy, right? And, and the people that you're talking about usually are some have some form of conflict involved. And so the two things that you can really, um, the, the two things that content really rides on is conflict and curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so you'll notice a lot of the content that people talk about have those elements in it, right? It either has that lean in factor where it's like, what is this about? Or it's like, man, you're taking sides, right? You're like, oh, I'm on this, I'm on this side, I'm on this side. And so, um, and, but it's a fine line as a creator to walk, especially when you look at the polarization that's happening around certain artists that begin to speak out either politically or religiously or, or whatever it is. 
you'll start to see that polarization happen where traditionally artists like especially music artists have tried to stay um you know out of it like they, they they're just like hey here's my art it's made for everyone i want everyone to enjoy it i don't want to be controversial Ooh. like i just want to have good music right yeah and and everyone can enjoy it but as soon as they start talking about something that's controversial uh-oh now you have people that are like i don't like them anymore i don't like that well it has nothing yeah. to do with your music but the story you're telling is impacting your art now <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I, um, you're 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 bringing me to uh, to Ice T. Um, yeah, you know, some mm. people are, who are listening to this are going to remember uh, the song "Cop Killer." Oh, yeah. And yeah. it wasn't what when he created when he created that piece of music. It wasn't what people what what. It got misconstrued. It wasn't about some gangbanger going out and hunting down a cop and, and trying to kill a cop. It wasn't about that. It was about the lunacy of that whole whole entire life um, that led him to that situation. And Ice-T, wanting the, wanting the right people to hear that message decided instead of yanking the song he redistributed the song so that if you wanted it you could get it without having to pay for it and mm. it did upset a lot of people but look at what he's doing now he's on law and order and uh <laughs> <laughs> right the special victims unit or whatever where he's playing a detective Right? That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so <laughs> he reinvented himself so that so the people understood that his message was, "Hey, we need these laws. We need these people to help uh, to help protect us." And right. So. Um, yeah, and that and that's that gets into a lot of uh, the kind of headline reading that's happening today, where people don't read anymore they don't they don't dig into what's really happening to understand uh, we're just getting the headlines and so we're reacting mm -hmm. especially in the news cycle i don't i i kind of doubt that it's mainstream and people are actually this way but when you look at the news reactions it's like oh my gosh everyone's freaking out it's like did you read like five lines in to the article and what really you know the headline is clickbait right D like don't react off the headline alone read what's going on like what did the yeah. person actually mean <laughs> like what are they what's the real message <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right <laughs> and again as uh as a content creator and in this case because some um some of what we do is, is independent journalism that Hey, wait! Some of our job is wait. Stop for a second. Stop reacting and look closer at you know, and so we can see what's what's going on, right? Right. Absolutely. And and it, journalism is so needed. I mean, I went to UNC Chapel Hill for journalism uh, in college, and you know, it, it's a huge need in society right now because the long form, in depth journalism is just hard to find. Yeah. And so, you know, we got the headline reading going on, the, the polarization of our country with the reactions, with po politics and who believes what. And then you got the added challenge of if somebody does an in-depth uh, piece on, on a topic, then it's like, well, I don't trust your sources or I don't trust your, you know, your facts. <laughs> like, I, I believe a different set of facts, right? <laughs> yeah. So so it's like you're getting questioned from different directions, and it's very hard to find truth, uh, you know, and, and what the actual truth is about things. And so people are questioning that. But I do think that uh, eventually with enough of the truth out there where true journalists are, are telling the real stories, people can come to their own conclusions about what is actually true, um, which is why, you know, a lot of times for myself, I will listen to all the different perspectives and then put together the conclusion about yeah. what I think the, the real story is. Right. So, cause it's like, it's like, I have kids, right. And I, I was like, okay, so this happened. All right, let's get all the kids together. What, what happened? Okay. What do you think happened? Okay. What do you think happened? And then each one has some truth to it. 
<laughs> and then you can kind of piece it together and say, okay, I, I got, I get the, I get the picture of what happened here. <laughs> yeah. And that's what people are having to do now. Um, in, in the whole content world, right? It's like, you'll hear something. Is that true? I don't know. You'll talk to your friend about it. Did you hear about this? No, I didn't hear about that. Let me, let me go look at that. Oh yeah. Let me send you this article. Oh, that's not true. Let me look at this other article. Oh, oh, well, they're saying this. Oh, okay. Um, so it's, it's a very, um, interesting market right now in the news cycle and journalism and politics, just because of all those different factors that I've been talking about. And so it really does. I, I think journalism is so needed today and, and, and the freedom to say what your truth is, right. And the freedom to really have a long form format that people will engage with and listen yeah. to. So let me let me ask you this because uh, you're a big fan of, of truth and and getting the word out there, right? Um, especially during during the pandemic and everything. What what did you think of of some of those situations where the journalist was getting beat over the head by uh, by a cop? Now, there's probably some extenuating circumstances on either side of that that did not show up on the camera and didn't show up in in text or any of that kind of stuff. We don't know that the journalist didn't agitate the, mm. the cop to the point that he attacked. And we don't know that um, the the if the cop kept kept poking till he got something provocative from out of the journalist. We don't know that part because we only know what was presented to us how do right. we pass that yeah well this is new right so from the time that i was in school till now we have uh cops with video right we have uh body cams and uh bystanders <laughs> with a whole entire media crews right in their hand <laughs> yeah, in their <laughs> we, we never had that right yeah we never had a whole media crew in our pocket from multiple angles where anybody can pop open their camera and just start shooting. Right. And so it's keeping, I think the good side of it is it's keeping everybody honest. Uh, but to your point, the, where the video starts and where the video stops and what's edited out, what's cut out. Right. Um, you have the Jeffrey Epstein thing where the camera stopped working magically somehow. So, you know, we have things like that where, uh Oh, like we don't have the story. So, but I think that's where the investigative part of journalism comes in where it's like, what, what is the, what is the thing we can investigate? Right. Right. And, and so, but again, I get back to, um, people are smart in the aggregate, right? People can put their brains together and, and think through this stuff and have discussions about it and kind of talk through it and say, uh, okay, this is what happened. This is the evidence we have. Uh, if we think logically about it, here's what we can conclude. I think that's why guys like Joe Rogan are so popular, right? Like he's one of the top podcasters right now, if not yeah. deep top podcaster, mm -hmm. but he has a long form show two, three hours sometimes going in depth yeah. with experts and he asks a lot of good questions and he just listens. And so the audience can really start to form their own opinions instead of just getting told a soundbite on the news, you know, and Oh, I guess that's what I'm going to believe. Right. It's like, they get to form their own opinions. Yeah. Uh, there was a graph that uh, a buddy showed me a while back where it showed each of the media outlets and where they stand on the bias uh, spectrum. And so you could see kind of which news outlets are left leaning, which are right leaning, which are in the middle uh, and then how factual they were It is really fascinating. Uh, to see kind of um, the bias in one chart uh, kind of deal. And uh, yeah, just looking at that, that's how I was able to say, uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm reading more towards this way. Maybe I need to start, I need to start picking up some of these other biases to equal out <laughs> right. what I'm reading. Yeah. So you can kind of see like the other side. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. So, Anyway, we're we're starting to run run out of time. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> so, um, you 
you um, you're the CEO of, of, of Wave, and again, I'm going to spell that is W A V V E, right? Um, dot co. Yep, Wave dot co. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what's what is the the ultimate thing that you want for your subscribers and users? Yeah. So, so if you're listening and you uh, produce any sort of audio content, or you do Zoom calls, or you want to create content, uh, build an audience, grow your influence, we just we help you to turn your audio into clips for social media. So, video clips, and we really it's simple. We try to keep it. We're known and differentiated by being as simple as we can. So if you have a picture, either of your podcast or of yourself or of a, a landscape that you like, just find a picture, put your audio in there. We'll help you clip it out and then create those videos that you can share on social media. So, And uh, it's a free account, so you can come and create it for free and get started. Um, and uh, if you want uh, a paid plan, uh, you can email me at jeff at wave.co. And I'll give you a, a special coupon code to get a discount. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just there to help creators. So we, we hope we can help as many people as we can. Awesome. Well, Jeff, um, we'll have to do this again, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this was fun. <laughs> um, so uh, thanks for joining us today. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you, see everybody next time. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Take care. Stop there. Recording stopped. Cool. That was fun. Yeah. So, um, one more.
This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.